Hi everyone, this is Autopostrophe. Let's get, let's uh, check out Autumn's journey on Nintendo Switch. Okay. All right. Chapter one: The End of Summer. Sunlight filtered through the airy birch forest as the lush ferns grazed my boots. I momentarily shielded my eyes before I turned north, treading carefully. The muggy atmosphere that had hung over the past few months was now being replaced by the subtle crispness of fall. Through the trees were st or though the trees were still vibrantly green, apple picking season was fast approaching for the town of Barry. I cheerfully stretched one arm towards the sky, inhaling deeply. And thus, my weekly scouting for monsters, bandits, or anything out of the ordinary that may harm local citizens is over. Right! And that concludes my mission. I laughed, wondering why I was announcing my agenda to no one. <laughs> I guess I always wanted to say that out loud. Walking around alone does prompt you into monologuing just so you can hear a voice. <sighs> I just wish I wasn't restricted to freelance work and bury, though. How long is my training going to last? I'm more than ready for a knighthood. I could do this. I adjusted the belt holding my sword, making sure the hilt could be pulled out at a moment's notice. Humming, I decided to meander back to the village by following the thin river down the gentle slope. I love the terrain here. Not super rocky, but not entirely flat either. There was always an incl uh, inclination, and higher up I could get a breathtaking panorama of Barry and its endless orchards. Especially in autumn, when the leaves were so vibrantly red that the entire forest seemed to ignite, and the smell of crisp frost and thick fallen foliage lingered unwelcomingly. It was then I spotted something entirely out of the ordinary near the riverbank, leaning against the birch tree. Thin birch trees were not exactly known to be comfortable resting spots, and I did not recognize the stranger's attire. Uh. Hello, are you a traveler? His face came into view, and I realized he was sleeping, but that's not what caught me off guard. He had beautiful protrusions resembling shale shards jutting out of his long hair, right where someone's ears should be. Or was it a decoration covering his ears? I suddenly wanted to touch them, but I resisted. If he woke up in an untimely manner, it would be awkward to explain. At first I was about to leave, but then I noticed something else rather odd. From a simple glance, I saw no bags, no possessions, or anything else on him. This place was too far away from civilization for a simple afternoon stroll. Was he mugged? And if he had been in Barry previously, I would have known. It was a small town. Curiosity won me over. Um, hello? A flicker of concern passed my face. I grabbed his shoulder and gave a gentle shake, finding his lack of response unnerving. I quickly hovered a hand in front of his nose. Sure enough, he was breathing, and, it was, and I did not see any injuries that would suggest he was knocked unconscious. After some more feeble attempts to wake him, I decided to improvise the camp. I did not want to leave him unattended, and I knew I couldn't drag his body very far. After I killed him... <laughs> Tossing down my bag, I went to work. The fire crackled merrily on the birchwood as I opened my cloth, which contained a lump of rye bread and hard cheese. The rye bread's also hard too. It's a... These were emergency rations, lest I was unable to return to Barry. Mother and father were probably worried. Just as I was about to bite into the cheese, I saw movement and glanced up, eyeing the stirring stranger. Setting my food down, I cautiously shuffled over. I had previously placed his body in supine position and used my bag as a substitute pillow. Though it was probably more lumpy than anything else, it was better than nothing. Are you awake now? You've been out all afternoon. I was getting worried. I trailed up before, starting, before I started rambling and watched him curiously as he opened his eyes. Whoa! In a split second he shot up and clumsily fell back. I caught his arm to steady him. Whoa, take it easy. You just got up. He flinched from my skin contact and I hastily let go, retreating slightly. I didn't get any sense of hostility, but he certainly seemed bewildered. Uh... Uh, who are you? 
There was an uneasy edge in his voice, not quite one of panic, but more of anger. It was then I noticed that his eyes were of a brilliant amethyst hue, contrasting with his earthy hair tones. Better to remain calm. Orly, I found you in the woods outside of Barry. The surprise did not leave his eyes. They darted quickly to his hands, which then covered his face. Lastly, he ran his fingers through his brown hair. The horror on his face was so unsettling that I dumbly sat there for several seconds before mustering the courage to address him again. Uh. Um, are you all right? Obviously not, but I wanted to hear a get a but I wanted a better grasp of the situation. He attempted to sit up again, but this time he was prepared. Again, he was repelled by my touch, and I gave up the desire to help him in that way. He still appeared unstable, but ceased his sudden movements at least. He actually did it. The hell? He clutched at his temples, his eyes, or his finger, his fingers grazing over the odd fixations in place of his ears. He wobbled as he tried to stand, and I impatiently rushed to his side. <sighs> Stop it. You obviously can't move in your condition, so you might as well sit down and clear your head. What's going on? Who are you, and what are you doing here? He looked at me as if he was registering me for the first time since asking who I was. Everything about him screamed overwhelmed, and he simply grit his teeth in frustration. Ask him if he's hungry. Yeah. Well, but that's my food! Fine. I decided to find another angle to help him open up. I did not consider myself intimidating, but it was possible he had no desire to answer anything. Are you hungry? I softened my voice and returned to my spot by the fire. I grabbed the cloth and genially offered him the rye bread and cheese. <laughs> he only arched an eyebrow in disgust. Oh, what's that? That? It's food. You chew it. I ripped off a piece of the dark bread and demonstrated, humming delightedly to show that it was edible. He scoffed and averted his eyes. I don't care. I don't want it. It looks revolting. Sorry, my peasant food does not please my lord's taste. Ugh, his attitude was rubbing off on me. Calm down. If anything, he's hiding that he's scared. He did just wake up in a foreign place. Are you nobility? He fell silent, and only the occasional crackle of the fire and the hooting of owls interrupted the stillness. I leaned back and ruminated over my meal, careful to leave some food untouched in case he changed his mind. And there was that apple tart, too. I'll save it for later. I wrapped up the cloth, only vaguely aware that the stranger was examining my every movement. It, netted, it nettled me slightly, but I decided to comment. I did not want to do anything that would cause him to raise his guard even more. It was now dark, and I occasionally fed the fire, getting the feeling I was going to be spending the night. After what seemed like an eternity, he finally spoke up. Uh... Uh, who are you again? Orly. I'm from the town of Barry. And you? Kerr. He reluctantly uttered the name, gazing into the fire. He seemed much calmer now. And how did you get here? His lip curled, almost smirking knowingly. <laughs> you probably wouldn't believe it if I told you. You have unusual eyes and a strange fashion accessory over your ears. I think I can find your story credible. He flexed his hands, scrutinizing his fingers carefully. Uh, I'd come here willingly. Out of all places, I don't see why he decided to drop me in this low-born simplistic... Her? He glared at me, as if offended that I had addressed him directly. So, where are you from? I'm not particularly tied to any region. If it's not obvious already, I'm not one of you. He tapped his knee petulantly. I'm one of the dragons, an earth dragon. He stated it, full of pride with no ounce of humility. Dubiously, I inspected him from head to toe, taking note of the stone-like juts for ears and his remarkable eyes. He balked under my stare, but quickly regained his dignity. His eyebrows furrowed fiercely. So why would an earth dragon be here? It's not because I wanted to! He blurted out angrily, 
then touched his unique ears for comfort. I sighed, then tilted my head from side to side as I absorbed his explanation. All right, I'll admit I'm not exactly accepting this as a feasible, this as feasible, but I'm not dismissing it either. You can't transform back? If I could, do you think I'd remain in this pathetic body? So weak. I instinctively patted my sword hilt to cover that, or counter that remark, but stopped when I saw him attempt to stand again. Whoa! It was like watching a toddler take his or her first steps, but instead of cutely coaxing, I was fervently discouraging his efforts. We've already established that you're unfamiliar with your form. Besides, it's too dark to walk around aimlessly. I'll find a walking stick for you, and we can return to Barry if you'd like. It'll feel wrong if I abandon you in this state. I don't need your help. Are you saying I can't handle myself? I'm pointing it out. Realizing we were both escalating our voices, I looked away in a huff, not wanting to have our encounter turn so uh, turn sour so rapidly. An altar. Hmm. I need to find an altar. You heaven kind of worship us, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the dragon kind were here first, so it's only natural we pay our respects. I admit, I thought dragons were more divine and irreproachable. Care was definitely giving me a different impression. I barely knew anything about the dragon kind, though. They focused on their own affairs. You will take me there. It was a plain statement, not a suggestion or a plea. Why an altar? They're all heaven kind made. How would it help you? He parried my question uh, exasperately. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Do you know where one is? Yeah. Yes, there's one not too far from here. There's a cave that leads to it. Relief washed over his face, and for once his scowl vanished. Good. We should go there this instant. He obstinately tried to stand up again, but lunged forward and firmly sat him back and firmly sat him back. I, he obstinately tried to stand up again, but I lunged forward and firmly sat him back down. He gaped at me in disbelief, but my will was as stubborn as his. Good morning. We will do this in the morning. Get some sleep, and I'll find an alde ideal walking stick. I don't think you'll master bipedalism without some assistance, especially not in a day, and it'll be difficult if I have to physically support you the whole way there. So, just take it easy tonight. I'll even keep watch while you sleep. After my entreatment, he fell silent and gave a reluctant nod, closing his eyes wearily. I sighed gratefully, feeling moderately triumphant over that battle of pig-headedness. As Kerr was grumbling, I leaned over and pulled a small blanket out of my bag. The temperature was still pleasant, even at night, but it could cool rapidly, especially since it was the end of summer. After returning some items to my bag, I reshaped it so it was a passable pillow again, and offered it to Kerr, who seemed puzzled by its purpose. Believe me, you'll need something comfortable or you'll have trouble sleeping. Worse, you'll wake up with a sore back, and getting to the altar will be even more troublesome. <laughs> you already slept on it once. I think you could figure out how to support your head with it again. I laughed sheepishly at my own stab at light lightening the mood, but I could tell it wasn't working for Kerr. Disgrunted, he laid down on his side and experimented with a few positions before resting his head in satisfaction. At first he refused to use the blanket, but as the temperature dropped, he discreetly pulled it towards him when he thought I wouldn't notice. Probably to hide his expression, he rolled over on his back. He rolled over so his back was to me and the campfire. I had the feeling the initial shock took a lot out of him, and I admittedly hadn't helped when he'd ruffled my feathers more than once. Now that he was sleeping, though, any irritation I still felt dispersed along with the summer heat. I would need to be mentally and physically prepared for tomorrow, stay cool and collected as autumn. I poked the fire and stayed on my watch until exhaustion beguiled me into resting my eyes for just a few minutes. Hey. Oh, please. I've had less sleep than you and I'm already... <sighs> Energized and ready to go. Pouting, I poked Kerr some more with the walking stick I had fashioned for him. It hadn't been easy to find a sturdy stick in a birch forest, but I had located a long one that would suffice. I had stepped in. I had spent the morning carving off any bark that had even indented uh, the top to make it easier to grip. 
Now it was my dragon prod. Yeah! Up, oh, arise, sacred dragon. <laughs> Whoa, cut that out. Kerr hastily shot up, throwing off my blanket in a feeble attempt to hide the fact that he had used it. I decided to counter his usual scowl with the perkiness, most mer perkiest, most cheerful grin I could muster. Whoops, sorry about that. <sighs> Good morning. My buoyancy, buoyancy was genuine. For some reason, it satisfied me to know that my vivaciousness irked him. I could use my sunny disposition to my advantage. It'd be better than snapping at him at any rate. Stop poking me with that. You're welcome. It's your walking stick. Here, you're welcome. I turned it sideways and offered it to him. He warily gazed at it as if I was presenting a cobra instead, but carefully grasped it. Cautiously, he pressed the stick against the ground as he stood up. I remained close, lest he topple over like yesterday. His fingers drummed against the carved handle, and he looked at me quizzically. Uh, you spent time on this? Right! Well, I wanted to finish off with plenty, with a pretty flowering, or flowing ribbon, but I had the feeling you wouldn't like it. Grumbling, Kerr took a step forward, leaning on the stick before hesitantly taking another. Uh, with each step, he regained some confidence, and soon he was walking in a straight line, albeit with an uneven gait. He could not exactly break into a run or even a brisk stride, but it was a huge improvement from last night. I estimated we could reach the cave leading to the altar by mid-afternoon. I quickly packed and followed him, since I had the feeling the only thing on his mind was that, that altar. It's this way. I pointed towards the gentle incline, and care now care narrowed his eyes resentfully. Going downhill would probably be difficult for him. As we headed towards our destination, I kept my distance at first, but I gradually drew towards Kerr, one hand extended in anticipation of a stumble. Kerr bulked and increased the, the distance between us, determined to progress on his own. However, his pace was excruciatingly slow, and he was unwilling to start any small talk. As the slope gradually steepened, his footing became more unsteady, and I worryingly grabbed his arm for support. Whoa! Whoa! He twirled around in surprise, and I actually did up, end up bracing him. Once he was stable again, I sighed. <sighs> Look, I know you don't like me touching you, but if your priority is to get to that altar as soon as possible, I think you can swallow your dignity and accept my help. Excuse me. Besides, no one else around, no one else is around to see you. I don't need your help. You've done enough. I don't need any more help from you. He shifted his weight and started using the stick to ward me away. I frowned disapprovingly. Hey, if you try to hit me with that thing, I'll confiscate it. <laughs> Even I wouldn't do something like that. Gritting his teeth, he leaned heavily against one of the birch trees. When I get back, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Who? My master. His curt answer stalled the torrent of questions piling up in my head. It would be poor of me to interrogate him when he was still obviously overwhelmed by the situation. Right now, the goal was more important. Right! Then let's get you to that cave. You believe me? Everything I told you? Maybe you're just a very convincing actor, but I think even an actor would drop this charade after a while. Just as I was about to reach for him again, a low grumble pierced the forest. I glanced at Kerr in amused bafflement. He averted his eyes, but I could tell he was embarrassed. <laughs> you know, if you're hungry... Sh shut up! Well, I'm not! Another complaint from his stomach. I think you'll be able to walk faster if you have something to eat. What do dragons eat anyway? Annoying. Meddling heaven kind. I rolled my eyes. Well, you have a heaven kind stomach now, and I doubt it'll agree with a diet like that. But it does make sense that you wouldn't want to try bread or cheese. I doubt dragons a thresh rye, or run dairy farms. It was then that I remembered the apple tart. Even if Kerr found the pastry part detestable, the fruit would probably be familiar to him. I urged him to sit down. When he refused, I simply made myself comfortable on the ground first. Here, this is the closest thing I have to something found in nature. Uh, I could forage, but that would take even longer. What's that? It's a pastry. My dad owns a bakery. Uh, you probably wouldn't understand that. It's basically a treat with apple filling and, I think, some apricot jam. Thankfully, my dad preferred showing off the, nat the natural ingredients. As a result, the top of the tart had thin slices of appetizing fruit covered with a lustrous, uh, lustrous yellow glaze. 
Kerr sniffed it warily. It must have been agreeable enough, since he soon accepted the pastry. You're welcome. As soon as he started nibbling on it, he must have realized how famished he really was, because he quickly devour devoured the entire tart. I watched as he coughed slightly and wiped the crumbs off his mouth, but his expression was unreadable. So, how was it? Anything tastes fine when you're starving. Or you just inhaled it so fast you didn't actually taste it. Well, it should tide you over until we reach the altar. Kerr grabbed his stick and we resumed our trip. The extra sugar boost seemed to lift both the pace and his mood, although he stayed tactured. As we continued through the forest, I stopped and groaned when I spotted some dark trees. Oh no. Ah, oh, those are Felbin trees. Completely forgot. We should go around them. Felbin? He peered at the thick, gnarled trunks. <laughs> Whoa, scared of the bark? It'll be quicker if we continue in a straight line. No, it's not about the trees. It's what's in them. They make perfect nests for, uh, avitrals. The hell? The hell are those? Those giant bird things. I thought you would know them. Uh, I would if I understood your names. What do you, why are you giving new names to everything anyway? We dragons were here first and we already established. I raised my hand to silence him, not wanting to make any unnecessary noise. He scowled, but a shrill cry startled us both. <laughs> what do you call that? Whoa. Usually food. Well, that'll be us now. Perched on one of the lower branches was a reptilian bird with scales running down its front. The rest of its body was covered in earth-toned feathers. Though probably no taller than four feet, its extremely wide wingspan and sharp talons made it a fearsome animal to encounter in the wild. A veterals raised young in a way, uh, raised young way into the fall, so the mothers would be extra territorial this time of the year. The bird ruffled its plume, making itself seem larger than it was, and prepared to launch itself at us. I immediately stepped in front of Kerr, gripping my sword as I took a defensive stance. With Kerr's condition, an instant retreat wouldn't work. I'd have to guard him. Whoa! What are you? You're not planning to fight it, are you? Yeah. We have to ch- We have- uh, Do we have a ch- uh, Look out! <laughs> I shoved Kerr off balance. Thanks to my quick reflexes, we narrowly avoid a slash from the- a literal's talons. The wind whipped at my hair as the breeze flew up around us. I scrambled to my feet and sprinted forward, hoping to keep the literal's attention away from Kerr. As it dove towards me, I slashed upward. It veered away, dodging my counterattack. <sighs> Kerr, I'll keep it busy while you get away. Bring it. Are you stupid? I'm not leaving you behind. Kerr? I need you to take me to the altar. Maybe if you shouted the directions at me, I could get there. Uh, or maybe if you shouted the directions at me, I could get there alone. Yeah! I'm kind of busy here. I can't get my bearings in the middle of a battle. My aggravation was the incentive I needed to keep the uh, vitriol at bay. However, my training had never covered aerial attacks, and the bird's scaly front was like armor. The hell? Are you holding back? Uh, well, it's just protecting its young. It's trying to kill you. I think I haven't noticed. Oh, for the... The wings. Clip them. It won't hurt it, but it'll stop it from flying. Just clip the tips. I widened my stance as I prepared for another attack. At the last second, I leapt to the side, slicing at an angle. My sword beautifully sheared the avitral's thick primary feathers. The monster swerved into the ground, its shoulders and head bearing the brunt of the crash. It let out a cry, and I felt a split second of guilt. That vanished with a yelp as the bird tried to te tear me down with its talons. Luckily, the vitriol was designed for swooping down at prey rather than running on the ground, so it could only hobble awkwardly. As it screeched and futilely spread its wings, I retreated, grateful that it was even slower than Kerr. I wove through the trees until I, it finally gave up chasing me. Then, sighing in relief, I looped back and returned to Kerr, who was also at a safe distance. <sighs> Looks like it gave up, but what about its young? It'll be fine. The feathers will grow back and it can still hop on, hop back to its nest. Its babies won't need to eat as constantly at this stage anyway. Thanks. You should know a lot about them. Thanks for the suggestion. <laughs> he snorted indignantly. I already told you, they're food. Of course I'd know about them. Soon the forest was quiet once again, with only the sounds of our footsteps and the tap of Kerr's walking stick breaking the silence. Surprisingly, he did not protest, 
protest when I suggested a safer route, nor when I walked nearly shoulder to shoulder with him. I had the feeling that starting a regular conversation would push my luck, so I kept my mouth shut and instead hoped for no more setbacks. This is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a very deep cave. You simply take a turn and the altar's right there. That's it? No complex mazes? No shiny sacred magic lake with a guardian or anything? Hey, we did what we could. This is a modest altar. I took a deep breath and smiled reminiscently. I haven't been here in years. I think I came here to make the occasional offering around harvest season. I gave Kerr a cheerful look, but he continued forward, ignoring my recollections. I shrugged and followed, quickly catching up to him. Kerr awkwardly knelt down before the altar, discarding the walking stick once he was comfortable. His eyes closed with a softened scowl, almost as if he was meditating. Suddenly, his mineral-like ears perked and he stared directly at the statue. There was no change in atmosphere, but I could tell Kerr was angry. His hand tightly gripped his knee. I know we're connected. I demand that you remove this stupid curse. He fell silent and then looked around in bemusement. Was he was talking to someone? But I could not hear the other half of the conversation. For some reason, that made me even more attentive as I tried to piece everything together. You can't be serious. So I said a few things, but... Huh? Yes, I meant one. That's how I found the altar in the first place. He whirled towards me and blinked in confusion, as if studying me for the first time. I stiffened, wondering why he was staring at me so intensely. Once he finally turned away, I relaxed, although I could not help but feel anxious about the discussion. Uh, what about me? Annoying. Weak, pathetic, gives strange names to animals, doesn't seem to know much about Ishtera, or how the world works. Uh, is he referring to the heaven kind in general, or just me? Uh, what? Uh, I guess the food is half decent or something. What? No. No, no, no! You're not sending me on a, on a pointless inspirational quest. I'm not a child. I can't even walk in this form, so your plan is... At that moment, a blinding light flashed from where Kerr was standing, and I flinched in shock. <sighs> Whoa! Kerr? By the time I had knelt down and worryingly grabbed his shoulder, the flash had already disappeared. In one smooth movement, Kerr removed my hand and stood up without the walking stick. His eyes still seemed focused beyond me, and he slowly nodded to himself. Uh -huh. Um, did your powers return or something? He extended his palm and lurched towards the ground, slamming it against the hard stone. The entire cave shook. The tremor visibly and mentally shook me as well, and my heart pounded loudly. I felt so paralyzed I couldn't even scream. <laughs> Once I found my balance, I looked bewilderedly at Kerr, who smugly flexed his unarmed fingers. I stared curiously at his cocksure expression. So... He barely glanced in my direction. It's not exactly what I wanted. However, a portion of my original powers and strength are back, along with my balance. I can actually be comfortable in this form now. He gave a dismissive kick to the walking stick, then promptly walked away from the daltar. I mustered a small smile. Right! Well, that's promising at least. What will you do next? I do what he ordered me to do and become normal again. I don't need your help. I can handle this on my own. Uh... So you don't need to follow me. I had to anyway. There was only one way out of the cave. But as soon as we were in the open air, Kerr took off running with a grace and speed I'm sure no real heaven kind could ever replicate. I blinked once, and sure enough, I was alone. I scratched the back of my head, absorbing what just happened. You're welcome? Burying my head in my hands, I shook out, out my hair in frustration. <sighs> was I expecting something from this? Well, a thank you would have been nice. I tapped my sword hilt for reassurance. It's what a knight does. They help the weak and demonstrate their generosity when it is needed. Well, Kerr's not weak anymore. He can definitely take care of himself now. I guess my duty is done. Right. Mission complete. Just some experience as a reward and a discarded walking stick. Deciding not to linger any longer, I started walking back to towards Barry. My parents would certainly be worried by now. Chapter 2. Welcome back. Give me 
just a second. I trekked back through the forest, careful to avoid any more wild animals. When I reached the spot where I'd previously set up camp, I decided to take a quick break to eat. I unwrapped my bread and cheese, poking half-heartedly at the grainy texture as I stared at the remains of the campfire. As I was about to take a bite, I had an odd feeling of discomfort and glanced sideways. Am I really imagining things? I sighed. Care, I know you're there. You don't have to hide. There was only silence at first, but I heard a slight rustle and turned my head again. Seriously? You just moved to another location. I hope you weren't going to wait until I was asleep to steal my stuff. Sh shut up! I wasn't planning to do anything like that! Kerr reluctantly emerged from behind one of the bigger trees. His expression looked conflicted, and I could tell he did not want to be with me again. Welcome back! Did you miss me? <laughs> No, but then I realized I wouldn't be able to find the next altar without you. Well, you're out of luck. I don't know the whereabouts of any other dragon caves, nor am I carrying any, uh, carrying more apple tarts if you're hungry. There really is no reason for you to stick with me. You'll need to get another guide or find someone else that can help. But I don't want to go through the trouble of finding anyone else. At least until I get my bearings. I have no clue where to go from here. A small idea formed in my head. Wait. Perhaps I could accompany Kara to Oliver. If I explain the situation to Mom, maybe she'll consider writing me the night recommendation letter. Right! Hmm. Then if you like, I'll accompany you to Barry. From there, you can travel to Oliver. It's a huge city. You could probably find directions to other altars there. Does that sound acceptable? He grumbled in agreement and sat down on the fallen log I was using, but near the edge to leave me plenty or to leave plenty of space between us. Look. My master also asked me to interact with heavenkind more. And I've already been with you long enough. Nice to know I'm tolerable to be around. And your master doesn't seem that bad. <laughs> he, has an in he has an interest in working with heavenkind. I guess he didn't like it when one of his pupils didn't share his point of view. I grinned wryly. At least he was kind enough to curse you with some clothes. I didn't think dragons normally wore clothes. Is that a spell, or are those genuine articles? Kerr tugged at his shirt as if suddenly aware of it. Uh, I think it's a spell. It won't wear off or anything, will it? He scoffed. I assure you the spell won't wear off for my clothes. <laughs> it's just that I don't want to glance back during, I don't know, the heat of battle and catch you stark naked. Sh shut up! That'll never happen! Jeez, why are you so interested in me? interested in seeing me shirtless. If you want, I can take these off right- Stay focused! Please, no! I trust in the magical sustainability of those clothes, so please keep them on. Besides, you'll stay warmer that way. Is that why heavenkind wear them? Something like that. I pulled off some of the bread and popped it in my mouth. Kerr watched me- watched briefly with interest before haughtingly averting his eyes. Let me guess, you're hungry as well. I don't know what heaven can consume, but I don't think I can eat what I normally would. As he pursed his lips, I handed him the rest of the bread. He arched his eyebrow in surprise at the offering. It's fine. I had a small breakfast, and I'll be back in Barry soon. Without bothering, bothering to inspect it like he did the apple tart, Kara crammed the bread into his mouth. I stifled the laugh since I had the feeling dragons had no concept of chewing. Propping an elbow on my knee, I watched him with amusement. I was also feeling a little unimpressed with how dismissive he was towards me. Glower 
at him. Tease him. Uh, we'll tease him, I guess. I lowered my voice to imitate him. <laughs> Whoa, Arlie, I'm so eternally grateful. You are the best that heavenkind has to offer, and I'm so glad you helped me, feed me, and led me to where I needed to go. Where would it be without your immeasurable kindness? Thank you. Kerr coughed violently as he tried to respond and failed, and I continued. I feigned a sweet giggle and fluttered my fingers towards him. You're welcome. Oh, Kerr, it was nothing. You're welcome. After pounding his chest, he's then swallowing loudly, Kerr tried to speak up. Sh shut up! Whoa. Before he could start, I stuffed the last portion of cheese into his mouth. I kept my hand there, and we exchanged a meaningful look. His quizzical stare softened, and I took a step back. It's nothing. You finish eating. I'm going to take a quick walk. I stalked off before he could answer. I approached the riverside, crouched down, and splashed my face with water, rubbing my forehead and cheeks. Then I inhaled deeply and ruffled my hair, careful not to snag on my braid. <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't have done that. A knight was supposed to be courteous, generous, kind, just, honorable, and help those in need. And here I was, struggling to maintain a calm demeanor. There was something about Kerr's attitude that always got me worked up. Well, that and, that and him showing some gratitude would be nice. Was it wrong for me to seek that in the first place? I still have a long way to go before I'm more like Mom. How does she do it? I grabbed a flat polishing rock and stood up, throwing and catching it a few times while pondering what to do next. First things first, Kerr will return to Barry with me. We'll need to stock up on supplies and figure out where the next altar is. I tossed the rock and caught it again. <sighs> Does he expect me to travel with him the whole time? Or until Oliver? I wonder if I'm mentally prepared for this. Gripping the stone, I threw it into the water at an angle. It skipped a few times before disappearing completely. I bit my lip, not pleased with my three-hop achievement. I could probably get seven rebounds on a good day. I should get back. One of Kara's already got impatient and left. As I turned to leave, I heard a loud splash and immediately whirled around, unsheathing my sword. Yeah! I angled the blade upward and widened my stance. Bursting from the water was a large serpent-like dragon with a translucent ridge down its back. It flapped its wing-like fins, head, head extending beyond the shore. I gritted my teeth, searching for a weak point, but kept my distance. Tightening my grasp on my sword, I looked the dragon directly in the eye. It recoiled when it saw my weapon, withdrawing its head, but made no further movements. It didn't appear to be hostile. I slowly sheathed my sword, but kept a firm grip on its hilt. A mist formed around the dragon, and I stepped back, unaware of whether to retreat or wait. It seemed to vanish as if as the mist overtook it, and I squinted. Moments later, I spotted a rather hazy figure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I blinked as a lith heavenkind person appeared before me. He had similar ears as the water dragon, so I could safely assume they were one and the same. He also had brilliant teal-colored hair, which I had never seen before. He fidgeted with his hands and gave me an apologetic look. Are you okay? Uh, I didn't mean to uh, frighten you. His wide eyes disarmed me completely, and I could only wave my hands frantically to reassure him. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, no, it's fine. I didn't mean to threaten you with my sword. It's just sort of instinctive and... Uh, it's understandable. You didn't know what my intentions were, and I probably looked intimidating. We both stopped and exchanged an awkward smile. <laughs> At first it was a giggle, but I soon started laughing, then rubbed the back of my head sheepishly. <laughs> he joined in with his gentle, with its own gentle chuckle, and any tension we felt from our rather intense encounter dissolved instantly. Um, so what are you here for? I'm looking for someone. He should be around here, and he would have unique ears like mine, and... Oh, you mean Kerr? Are you Kerr's master? His eyes widened. Uh, me? Oh, no, no. I'm actually a pupil for someone else, but I know his master well. He raised his arms and glanced at the sleeves, tugging on them before inspecting the rest of his clothes. It was then I could see his long hair tumble over his shoulders, complete with a flowing purple ribbon. Mm, you look fine. Oh, even transformed with a braid already in place? That's cute! He grinned cheerfully, seemingly pleased with himself. Thank you! Th <laughs> Heaven girl, there you are! 
Hmm. I have a name. Kerr approached us petulantly and gave the new boy a supercilious glare. The boy balked slightly and glanced shyly away. The hell? I heard a lot of splash and gave a check. Who are you? Uh, I'm Ilmari. Uh, we've met a few times. Kerr gazed at him so intently that Ilmari squirmed uneasily. <laughs> nope, don't know you. And how did you find me anyway, Ilmara? Um, Ilmari. Well. I overheard our masters talking and Master Bedros mentioned you. Uh, so I... Her ground lo groaned loudly. Let me guess, they sent you. Um, sure, sent. Uh, they sent me to supervise your assignment. I'll go! So please take me with you! Her and I exchanged glances. Uh, look, Ellie. Ilmari. Whatever. I don't need your help. This isn't exactly something I want to do, nor do I want more company to slow me down, unless you can fly. Ilmari's face fell. And can instantly take me to the next altar. I'm not interested. Go back and tell our masters I can handle this myself. But, but... I sighed and stepped in, raising a hand to touch Kerr's shoulder. You don't need to. Kerr flinched from the physical contact and I mentally kicked myself for forgetting already. Right, no touchy. Anyway, I think Yomari will, pro will prove useful. He did say the masters wanted this right. They placed their trust in him for a reason. Yomari shifted his eyes and glanced at the ground. But right. I promise. I promise I won't be a burden. And if I am, well, I can go back. Her grumbled and merely walked downstream, waving dismissively. I don't care. Do what you want. Just promise you won't lecture me or do any of that nonsense. I already get it enough. Promise. Lamari's smile was so bright that I couldn't help but grin as well. I turned to him and offered a hand, and he tilted his head quizzically. Looks like we'll be traveling companions at least for a while. Um, this is an offer to shake hands. It's a greeting between heavenkind. Ilmari extended his hand and then I gave him a firm shake. Pleased to meet you. I'm Arlie. Pleased to meet you too. Thank you. And thank you for convincing her. Thank you? Pardon? Thanks. I have no idea how long I've been waiting to hear those words. I have a feeling you and I will get, al get along swimmingly. Swimmingly? <laughs> he glanced back at the river, then chuckled. Is this heaven kind humor? Something like that but it usually elicits more groans than laughter. Come on, we should probably get going before Kerr decides to ditch both of us. I don't have any more food to lure him back. Uh, about food and heavenkind needs. I researched a bit, but I'm not completely familiar. Don't worry, my dad makes food for a living, so you'll learn a lot about it. He nodded happily. With that, we quickened our pace before Kerr could yell at us to hurry. I wonder how they'll react to entertaining a heavenkind town, or entering a heavenkind town. Chapter 3, Barry. Uh, Alright. Save. save. Wait, did I actually save? There we go. And uh, why don't we stop it there? Uh, this is Autobosophy, I'm watching Autumn's Journey on uh, Nintendo Switch. Um, well, I mean, it seems cute so far. Um, I wasn't really expecting uh, that much from the game. I, uh, I always like it better when there's a, a little bit more voice acting. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to provide you with like a lot of different variety of voices. Uh, and I tend to forget who does what voice uh, many times, so uh, excuse me for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like the art. It's pretty good. Um, I do like the prose, although it's using, you know, some words which I find a little awkward to say. Um, but that's okay. Uh, learning and pronouncing new, wor new words is, uh, is a habit that uh, we, should all, we should all try to, uh, uh, to add into our lives. Um, Obviously, this is a this is a, a lower price visual novel, so it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. 
um, that you would get from, um, you know, uh, some of the other visual novels that I've been covering. Uh, but I'm okay with a, a slightly lower budget uh, novel if the intentions are good and the story uh, is uh, is well made and well told. And it looks like that would apply to this, uh, although, you know, we'll have to play more to, uh, to see how I feel later on. But, uh, you know, right now it's on sale for like $4. I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a low risk investment and uh, so far I, I think it seems like it's worth it. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching. I will see you at the next stream.